Happy President's Day and welcome to Mocha Don is Right. I am Mocha Don and today we're just going to do a quick talk about the fact that the government is about to raise your damn taxes. They are going to raise your taxes no matter what. They are not going to let you have anything to say about it. We're going to talk briefly about why, but the point is, is they are going to do it. It is inevitable. There's no way around it. They have no choice and you're going to have no choice. I'll explain why in a little slideshow. Here we go. So what we're seeing here is a pie chart of the federal budget, the expenses. What is it that the government spends your money on and, and then some? And as you can see, about a quarter of it, 25.3% is spent on Social Security. About 28% is spent on health, which is your Medicare, Medicaid, Veterans Health Care, Retired Government Employee Health Care. It's the Obamacare subsidies, and it's also the money that's spent uh, for children and various other programs for the poor. Uh, there's also about 16.2% spent on defense and homeland security. About a third of that is for the wars that none of us want. The rest of it, however, 4% uh, on veterans. No one's going to cut veterans. No one's going to cut defense. Not really. Maybe we'll get rid of some wars, but they're not really going to cut it. No one's going to cut social security. It's the third rail of politics. You're certainly not going to give up your Medicare, or your Medicaid, or your Obamacare subsidies. That leaves us with about uh, 6% there, 1% labor, 1% science, 1% energy, 1% housing, 2%. That's all we give to, uh, in, in the money we give to those other countries is only 2%. That's only 6%. And I'd like to get rid of the Department of Education, but that's only 3%. So that we're up to a whopping 9% when the federal deficit is already a little bit more than a quarter of the total federal budget. So what's up with that? Well, the drivers of growth in our spending are, of course, health care. Medicare, you know, I'm a baby boomer. I'm retiring and I want my Medicare. Social Security, I'm looking forward to my Social Security. I'm old enough. I'm probably going to get to see some. I don't know how old you are, but you may very well not. Then there's the interest on the debt that's growing. The interest on the debt is always growing because the debt is always growing. We're $34 trillion in debt. That's insane. And it's growing. So the interest on that debt is going to keep growing. And those are one of the main drivers of our growing spending. Now, most of this spending is on autopilot. It's mandatory. The debt is mandatory. In fact, it's constitutionally mandated. But Social Security is not discretionary. Congress does not vote on it. It's mandatory spending. It's pre-programmed. Uh, Medicare is mandatory spending. It's pre-programmed. Congress doesn't vote on it. Currently, the Obamacare subsidies are set up as mandatory spending. They're pre-programmed. So, as we see, about two-thirds of the budget is already being spent without Congress having to take a vote. And they love that. They don't want you to have to ask them, well, why are you spending money on that versus this? The more stuff they can cram into the mandatory spending, the happier they are. This creates a problem, though, because the government only collects about 18.8% of GDP in taxes. Now, this is called Hauser's Law in economics, but basically, no matter what you set the tax rates at in a progressive system, you're only going to get about 18.8% because people will change their behavior to avoid the taxes. Meanwhile, the federal government is up to 27.9% or headed towards 27.9% of GDP in spending. You can see the little blip here where it goes up for COVID. You can see a blip when it went up during the Great Recession. But right about now, we're spending something in the neighborhood of 23, 24% of GDP. And we're only taking in taxes of about 18.8%, maybe a little bit less, 18%. And that's not going to change with a progressive tax system. There isn't going to be any soaking the rich. Here we see the federal per capita spend is so spending soaring 
In fact, this is insane. For every man, woman, and child in America, your federal government, not your state, not your town, not your county, no, 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 not your city, your federal government spent $19,594 for each and every man, woman, and child in America in 2022. That's crazy. That's almost $80,000 for a family of four. How many families of four do you know that pay $80,000 in taxes? I have a clue for you. You're about to get to know a whole lot more. If you were a family and you did your budget like the federal government, if you were the median family income in the United States um, based in 2023, the, that's half made more and half made less. So the median is $74,580, and that's per tax return. So that, that includes large families with a lot of kids, and it includes single people. The average family made $74,580. But if they were spending like the federal government, they would have spent $103,058. Now, you and I both know you can't do that for very long or you're headed straight to bankruptcy court. So that means the federal government, if it were a family, put $28,478 on its credit card. And it did that despite already being more than half a million dollars in debt, $573,824 in debt, and they're going to put another $28,478 on the credit card. Nobody would do that if they were running a business. Nobody would do that if they were running a family. But wait, where does the government get its money? Well, it gets about 48.5% from individual income taxes, and it gets about 34.9% from Social Security taxes and Medicare taxes. Those are your payroll taxes. It's what you pay and your employer pays. Collectively, you each pay 7.65%. That's really just a reduction of your income. So in reality, you should be making 7.65% more money because your employer's not paying that money. You're paying it. You're just not seeing it in wages. About 11.4% is corporate taxes and 5.2% is from fees. You know, fees they charge at the airport, fees they charge for passports, fees the government charges businesses for using their facilities. So you think they're going to raise the tax rates in a marginal tax rate system like we have now, a progressive marginal tax rate system. Uh, they're not. It doesn't work. Back in 1960, you see the tax rates were 91%. Individual income tax receipts were about 7.6% of GDP. This is, by the way, another chart showing an effect of Hauser's Law, which basically says it doesn't matter what the tax rate is, you're going to get the same amount of money. It's gone up actually a little bit as they cut the taxes down to 37%. It's gone up to 10.5% of GDP, but basically you cannot raise taxes high enough to get this money. It's not possible. So how are they going to do it? Well, they're not going to soak the rich. The rich um, top 1% get 22% of all income. They pay 42% of all income taxes. When you compare that to the poorest people who get uh, less than $42,200 a year, the bottom 10%, they only pay 2%. So, I mean, that, that's terrible. They get 10% of all the income. I mean, they're the bottom half of America. Half of America is paying less than 2% of taxes. And... They get 10% of all the income earned. So this is what you need to understand. They need to find a way to tax the poor people. They can't get it from the rich. They can't get it from businesses because the businesses will all move to China or somewhere else where they'll be taxed less. They're going to have to get it from you. And they're going to have to get it from everybody. But they're not going to get it mostly from the rich. They're going to get it mostly from average middle income and lower income people. Europe's been doing that for a long damn time. And European taxes are coming to you. The European tax system hammers the middle class. It, the average person with no kids or family, maybe husband and wife with no kids in Europe, pays 26% of their income in total taxes. In the United States, it's only 20% of their income. If they have uh, two kids, so, you know, husband, a wife, and two kids, they pay 23.6% of their income in taxes in Europe. Here, it's only 13.3%. We subsidize our children. The employer-side payroll tax in Europe is 21.6%. 
Here it's 7.7%. That's actually the 7.65% of the payroll taxes that your employer pays, which is just income you didn't receive. Your employer, believe me, doesn't pay anything. But in Europe, they figured out how to get money from the little guy. They're going to get money through a sales tax, which they call a VAT tax. In the U.S., the average sales tax is 7%, and it's charged at the retail level. In Europe, a VAT tax might only be 2% or 3%, but it's charged at every level. So the manufacturer pays 3%, the distributor pays 3%, the retail store pays 3%, and then when you buy the stuff, you pay 3%. So it really adds up to more like 12%. And then they have sales taxes on top of that. That's coming to you. They're going to try to bring that to the U.S. George Soros has been trying to do that for a long time. And it's one of the ways they're going to pay for their socialism. When they take all your money, you have nothing to do but give it to them. A worker earning $40,000 in Europe paid total taxes, and that includes his payroll tax, this includes his income tax and it includes his VAT and sales tax. In Europe, paid total taxes on $40,000 of $17,533. Here in the United States, we were a lot better off. $40,000 worker in the United States paying all of the taxes, right? The payroll taxes, the income taxes, his employer's part of the payroll taxes, the VAT tax, or there, in the U.S., there's a sales tax. The sales taxes here. They paid $11,648. That is a better deal that we've been getting, and our good deal is going to come to an end. They're bringing the European system here. The reason they're doing it is simple. We have massive debt. Last year, we put $1.7 trillion on the credit card. That was put us up to $33.6 trillion in debt at the end of 2023. Hell, we're already well over $34 trillion in debt President's Day of 2024. And what they don't remind you of is that there's $75.3 trillion in debt. That, that's money they're going to have to pay for Social Security and Medicare I hope we still have Social Security and Medicare, but I wouldn't be counting on it if I were you. Now, I made one move. I got the hell out of California. I moved to Reno, Nevada. Reno is a beautiful mountain area which has no state income taxes. Nevada has no state income tax. So I escaped that 13% nightmare in California, and I don't know how you Californians put up with it, that's one thing you can do. Either get control of your state government or move to a tax-free state like Nevada or Texas or Florida. But if you're a Democrat voter, please don't come here. We don't want you voting in your liberal high-tax policies here in Nevada. But you're not going to be able to leave the country. And to that extent, you're going to be a little bit screwed, you're stuck here, you're a United States citizen, and you're, you're stuck in the United States. I hate to be the one who has to bring you the bad news about that, but welcome to the world we're coming to. You need to get politically active. You need to start telling your representatives not to spend this money, not to raise taxes, to get this damn budget balanced. If they're going to raise taxes, do it one time as a flat tax. They need to get this damn budget balanced because there's absolutely no way that these taxes aren't coming to you, no matter how much or how little you make. They're coming to you. They aren't coming to someone else. They're not coming to Bill Gates. They're not going to tax the corporations because they'll all move out of the country. They are coming to you. So be prepared for that. Listen, God bless. Thank you for joining me for the show this President's Day of 2024. Please like, comment, and subscribe. We need your help. We want to grow the channel and get this information out. We want to mess with that YouTube algorithm that tries to suppress the truth. It was very hard to actually find out how much they're spending. So, God bless and have a great day.